welcome everyone uh, so welcome to this meetup uh, now we are going to talk about what's new in cloudstack 419 419 is the latest release of uh, cloudstack latest lts release we released it just at the start of this month on 6th of feb uh, it took a lot of effort from everyone in the community to bring in a lot of new and exciting features into cloudstack so let's look into it. A uh, little bit about me. Uh, I am a long time committer and PMC member at CloudStack project. Uh, I've been involved with CloudStack uh, since half a decade. Uh, in past I have worked on uh, different LTS releases and this time I was the release manager for 419. Uh, as day job I work as a software engineer at Shapeblue and that's a little bit about me. Uh, this will be the agenda of this talk. Uh, we will talk about uh, LTS releases in CloudStack, recent releases and features that we introduced. Uh, then particularly about 419 release, uh, key features there. Uh, if we get some time, we can do some uh, question answer and feedback. Uh, so let's dive into it. Uh, CloudStack LTS releases, we as a community try to uh, do two major releases every year, uh, uh, somewhere in uh, Q1, uh, one release in Q1, then in Q2. Uh, we also try to do minor or dot releases with fixes uh, and uh, small improvements, uh, one or two minor uh, releases every year. Uh, current LTS release, as I said, is uh, 4.19. Uh, which we released this month only and recent releases, uh, other releases are uh, we released 4.18 and 4.18.1 last year so that's uh, that's those and with in future uh, we are coming up with uh, minor uh, dot release 4.18.2 which would be uh, mainly around fixing some of the issues in 4.18, uh, then 4.19.1 uh, which will again fix issues or some improvements in 4.19 release. Uh, then for the major release of this year, uh, we will be moving on to 4.20 or 20.0, uh, there is thread going on in the community around it, so naming will depend on that. Uh, quick recap of 4.18, uh, with 4.18 uh, uh, as well or with any major release uh, generally as a community we try, uh, we have been getting uh, somewhere around 300 to 400 new features or improvements, uh, bug fixes. So with 4.18 as well we got 300 new features, uh, over 300 new features. Uh, there were some uh, interesting features like S zones, VM auto scaling. Uh, Rohit talked about manage user data, which could be useful uh, for bringing in many interesting use cases. Uh, we introduced uh, support for uh, tungsten fabric, uh, two factor authentication, uh, support for volume encryption has been added. Uh, and things like those API driven uh, console access which provides security for uh, console access for your uh, VMs. So all these things were added in 4.18. There have been uh, improvements on these features or uh, some fixes on these in uh, subsequent 4.18.1 release. So um, now let's look into 4.19. Uh, with 4.19 as well, we closed around uh, 315 items in the milestone. Uh, there were 254 uh, PRs merged uh, with features or enhancements. Uh, over 100 PRs from uh, pull request from 4.18 milestones were uh, forward merged. So all those fixes which were in 4.18, one uh, got forward merged in 4.19. Uh, we as a community, uh, Rohit talked about uh, how active we are. So over 40 unique contributors contributed to 419 release. And similarly, uh, over 130 issues from 418 uh, milestone were carry forwarded. So now let's look into uh, key features that were added in uh, 419 release. Uh, 
a lot of work has been done on uh, uh, getting ease of adoption and onboarding. Uh, we talk about uh, uh, the hyperscaler repatriation or moving on to uh, a private cloud. So work has been done on that. Uh, recently we have this news of VMware. So with 419, a uh, great new feature has been added around that as well. Uh, there have been uh, work on integrations. Uh, we have added object storage support. Uh, we have added OAuth uh, support for uh, authentication and uh, user login. Uh, then there is uh, core additions or uh, features. Uh, sorry, this got cut. Uh, there is there are core features th that have been added to CloudSec. So uh, some functionalities which are already there they have been improved. Uh, other than that, there are regular fixes and improvements which user has reported on GitHub or mailing list that have been fixed and improved. So let's talk about uh, some of the key features. Uh, as I mentioned uh, with respect to VMware, uh, we have added a great new feature uh, of importing or migrating your VMware uh, virtual machines to KVM. So with a simple, uh, uh, this has been added with both in terms of API and UI. So with simple click of few buttons, you can import your uh, instance running on a VMware uh, hypervisor to KVM. So for this, uh, there might be some prerequisite like you have to add your uh, uh, vCenter or vSphere data center into CloudSec and have a equivalent KVM uh, infrastructure. So CloudSec can uh, then import your all your instances to KVM uh, with some API call or uh, UI uh, intervention. A uh, great new tool uh, helps you move into a, a more open source model of uh, infrastructure. So that has been added in uh, 419. Uh, again, uh, uh, if you are using a different virtualization platform, uh, something like Proxmox or Overt, uh, 419 release comes with uh, a feature called KVM ingestion. We, since uh, uh, the 414 release of CloudSec, we already had uh, VMware ingestion feature where you can uh, have your uh, existing VMware infrastructure imported into CloudSec. Similar concept has been brought into KVM ingestion. Uh, you can have your uh, workload running with Proxmox or Overt or anything uh, else which uses KVM and then uh, you can simply import it in CloudSec use all the functionalities of CloudSec, multi-tenancy, uh, uh, etc. Uh, specific thing to mention, uh, this year we also worked with the GSOC project. So a part of this feature has been worked by a student from GSOC, GSOC project. So that is great uh, in terms of community participation. Uh, next, we talk about integration. So uh, we have added object storage feature in uh, CloudSec. Object storage has been added as first class uh, feature in CloudSec. So uh, you can allow, as a cloud provider, you can allow your users to uh, use uh, object storage of your choice. Uh, uh, they can upload, they can access their uh, buckets. So. Uh, with 4.19, uh, this framework has been added. Uh, as an initial uh, uh, step, uh, MinIO plugin has been uh, uh, already added. And uh, as Rohit mentioned, and also uh, from the community, we can see there are already work on Hawaii uh, object storage service and Ceph integration uh, with this framework. So it would be great to see uh, uh, object storage uh, develop. Maybe in future uh, it could replace uh, something like secondary storage in CloudSec and uh, users or uh, cloud operators can store all their templates directly onto their object storage. Uh, next we see uh, flash, pure flash array and HP Primera support has been added. So. Uh, with the long list of uh, storage plugins supported by CloudStack, uh, another uh, 
uh, one is being added. Uh, currently, it is for KVM only. Uh, it adds uh, fiber channel as a uh, volume type and uh, things like those. So, uh, from what I uh, what we have experienced uh, from uh, community documentation, it supports all the uh, common use cases. So, if you are looking into some uh, enterprise level uh, storage solution, uh, uh, CloudSec can provide all those. Uh, we already have existing uh, storage plugins uh, uh, like we uh, support Scale.io, Linstore, Store Pool. So, with 4.19, uh, there have been many changes in Linstore and Store Pool plugins. Uh, like HA support has been added for store pool, uh, volume encryption which was already added for Scale.io I guess in 4.18 uh, has been uh, brought into store pool as well. Uh, similarly for uh, Lin store there is a snapshot backup uh, uh, in primary storage itself. Uh, CloudStack already supports secondary storage uh, backup. So, uh, things like those have been added. Uh, now, in terms of uh, usability, O2 authentication framework has been developed, uh, and uh, you can, as a cloud provider, you can uh, provide single sign on for you, your users with third party in identity providers. Uh, we already have support for uh, Google and GitHub. And it won't be too difficult for uh, any other provider to be added, which supports uh, OAuth. So, great uh, ability. Uh, we already have support for uh, other identity methods like LDAP. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, previous in previous release, we already added two-factor authentication. So, great in terms of uh, security and uh, usability. Now, coming on to core changes in CloudStack or uh, uh, making uh, existing uh, things better in CloudStack, uh, we have added CloudStack DRS, uh, similar to something like uh, what VMware provides. Uh, CloudStack can now automate balancing and uh, distribution of your workload across uh, host. This is hypervisor agnostic. so. Uh, it doesn't matter if you use VMware, KVM, or Zen, or any other uh, supported hypervisor. Uh, CloudStack will try to uh, balance those. Uh, there are currently two different algorithms, condense and balance. Uh, based on that, uh, it can enhance your uh, environment's performance. We talk about things like green computing. So this is a great step in terms of uh, uh, improving the performance of a cloud. Uh, next, we uh, have added a snapshot copy feature, uh, which would, uh, would allow uh, copying volume snapshots from one zone to another, create a replica of that, and based on that, you can do disaster recovery as a service. Uh, we had a great talk about this in uh, uh, last conference in uh, Paris, uh, CloudStack collaboration conference, where Alex showed a uh, live demo how his uh, uh, he created a small uh, uh, e-commerce site which can be replicated on a different uh, region within a few minutes with some sort of API automation and uh, this new functionality. So, great thing if you are looking for a highly available uh, service on top of CloudStack and want some disaster recovery for your users. Uh, it works similar to existing functionality that we have in CloudStack uh, for template copy. Uh, you can just simply select multiple uh, zones uh, while creating snapshots. So, uh, great little feature here. Uh, then we have added uh, VNF appliance support. Uh, provides uh, automated uh, uh, kind of feature for uh, people who are looking for uh, VNF deployment. So, earlier uh, uh, user had to deploy manual networks, uh, multiple manual ne networks. Now, with the integration in 
deployment uh, VM deployment form itself uh, you can create VNFs easily so something to look forward if you are into uh, uh, some advanced networking uh, and provide some specific features for your uh, users as a cloud provider uh, CloudSec already uh, uh, as Rohit showed a lot of uh, already provides a lot of options for networking and uh, 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 different use cases so for VPCs uh, uh, different changes have been made uh, like for uh, till now a VPC would be owned by a by an account but now it can be owned by a domain so all the users in that domain can access that VPC. So this could be useful uh, for a small group of team which is uh, working on same uh, infra. Uh, currently, but it is available uh, only through API. So in future, uh, uh, UI support may be added. Then uh, uh, as Roy showed, uh, there are ACL rules for VPC. So you can now uh, create one set of rules and replicate it for different VPC uh, uh, networks. So, uh, nice new thing in terms of uh, usability. Uh, moving on to something uh, to Kubernetes, uh, we have two different methods of deploying Kubernetes cluster in CloudSec, uh, either through uh, CloudSec's own Kubernetes service, which Roj showed, uh, or through uh, Kubernetes CAPI APIs, uh, we have tool CAPC. So, with 4.19, uh, uh, the, even the Kubernetes cluster deployed with uh, CAPC uh, can be shown in the CloudSec UI, or CloudSec is aware of those. So, you can manage both sort of uh, uh, Kubernetes cluster, either deployed through CKS, that is CloudSec Kubernetes service, or through CAPC. Uh, uh, there is corresponding Go SDK release as well for this, so uh, this is nice step in terms of uh, Kubernetes integration into CloudSec. Uh, then lately we have been getting a lot of uh, user requests how they can uh, start and stop their uh, instances uh, automatically. So this new hypervisor agnostic feature uh, adds a functionality of scheduling uh, instance operation. So you can uh, schedule when your instance should be started, when it should be stopped. Uh, things like tho those, it can uh, start, stop, force, stop, reboot, things like that. So it uh, again similar to DRS, it helps uh, optimizing uh, resources in an environment. Uh, can help in lowering uh, operational cost. Next is uh, uh, public IPs, uh, we see uh, CloudSec can acquire uh, as a user, uh, uh, CloudSec allows acquiring public IPs for uh, different use cases, uh, but in some cases it could be that one public IP is acquired partic by a particular user uh, and then when network is destroyed or that IP is released. It is used for another purpose, but there could be some service breakages in uh, between that or the user would still be ex uh, expecting uh, previous service. So uh, this new feature of quarantining the public IP allows uh, giving some uh, bandwidth in terms of time uh, to really actually release that IP and make it available for other users. So. Uh, this is a nice new feature added by community in 4.19 release. Next is uh, dashboard redesign. We already had a great new modern UI since 4.15 uh, release, but with 4.19 uh, a lot of uh, optimizations or redesigning has been done uh, based on user inputs uh, what they would want to see. Uh, once they log in. So, uh, great feature in terms of uh, uh, making uh, uh, CloudSec more user-centric uh, 
all the details of uh, infra or uh, user accounts or events or actions are shown in on the first dashboard page itself which makes it easier to access different resources other than these uh, some of the major uh, changes there have been a lot of other improvements as well uh, like we have introduced a feature uh, on safe shutdown uh, where uh, if you have uh, your management server running and there are some jobs already running it would uh, allow waiting for those jobs to finish before uh, trying to shut down the management server uh, there have been improvements of in uh, s zone functionality uh, now you can deploy Kubernetes cluster in S zones as well. Uh, in S zone, we you don't uh, require any of the uh, uh, system VMs to run or uh, different storages to be configured. It can be a single uh, CPU using uh, local storage. So things like that. Uh, we in UI we have added a storage browser. Uh, uh, then. Uh, there have been uh, improvements in uh, user data uh, in terms of how uh, multiple types of user data are concatenated uh, like uh, uh, an operator can provide his set of user data when he registers a template and user can provide uh, another set of data during the uh, instance deployment so uh, improvements around those uh, support for vSphere 8 has been added. Uh, a feature around uh, domains in CloudStack have been added uh, where you can uh, move subdomains across different domains. So, uh, this could, could be useful for uh, large enterprises who wants to uh, uh, move their set of users to different departments. Uh, there is new system VM template. So, uh, something in terms of uh, more security uh, uh, we use debian for system template so uh, latest release for that and now what's uh, this is this was all about uh, cloud stack 419 now what's coming next uh, as i mentioned initially uh, we are uh, looking forward to a dot release for 418 uh, so it would be a maintenance release mostly uh, bug fixes uh, uh, that have been there uh, this will be in uh, q1 uh, q2 probably end of march uh, is a prospective timeline then in uh, q2 we are looking to work on a 4.19.1 release uh, uh, there are already uh, some interesting changes happening on that front uh, like uh, I talked about VMware to KVM migration uh, feature. Uh, in 419.1, we are working on improving that further uh, to speed it up probably 10x. There is already a POC in works in community, so uh, that should be interesting. Uh, then in 4.20 or 20.0 release, uh, uh, which might be in Q3, Q4 this year. Uh, we would be coming up something like uh, backroll plugin for KVM, uh, which would allow backing up uh, uh, whole of the environment uh, in terms of compute. And then uh, we have a feature for uh, webhooks. Uh, if you have worked with uh, GitHub webhooks, uh, it would be on similar lines and it would allow uh, using or uh, uh, working with uh, CloudStack events without uh, use of external services like uh, uh, Kafka or uh, RabbitMQ. So something interesting around that. Uh, we are coming up with a uh, new sort of API for uh, checking volume uh, consistency uh, for storage uh, check volume API. Uh, we are also having something like granular storage uh, resource management where uh, operator can limit uh, like right now operator can already limit 
number of resources uh, different users can uh, deploy or work with but with this new feature they can specify even on the granular level what type of uh, resource like uh, uh, if you are having two different set of uh, cpus uh, you can uh, specify user can deploy five uh, uh, instances of type 1 and two instances of type 2 so thumb, something like that uh, that's uh, 420 is it is still in works there would be lot many more uh, features and functionalities uh, after that there could be some thing like 419.2 or uh, maybe uh, uh, 20.1 uh, next year maybe 21.0 so uh, interesting uh, new functionalities coming on up in next few months or uh, by end of this year so that's uh, all from me uh, if you have any questions uh, uh, if you want to try uh, something which is already in works uh, apart from uh, features or functionalities that are already uh, released in 419 you can go to uh, nightly packages and uh, check those out uh, you can already test 419 release from uh, official download page of cloudsec website that's all any questions anyone Sir, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so your question is about uh, quarantining uh, public IP. Uh, so, uh, yes, user can uh, re-acquire uh, that IP. It is different from reservation in a sense that uh, uh, once user gives up that reservation, uh, there will be some time frame before it, uh, that same IP can be acquired by some other user. So can I say this is equal to elastic IP? Uh, I have to check uh, this is something uh, from community so Like you have some service already running on that IP, so all the users, uh, even if your service is uh, expired today or uh, is removed today, uh, users might still be accessing those, uh, but same IP is acquired by some other user, so this is to provide some bandwidth of time uh, between that. Yes, it can be allotted. Uh, it is just that uh, time frame that we uh, mentioned uh, through this global config. Between that, it won't be allowed to be uh, reserved by some other user. Yeah. Uh, not for backup, uh, like uh, yes, yes. Okay, your question is about store pool or install plugin uh, questing uh, DVM. So it allows uh, that because uh, it is uh, the uh, common framework in CloudSec. So uh, uh, the storage plugin is ho only handling the storage bits. So I have to check uh, that, but. Uh, I I'm kind of sure with the store pool it doesn't. Uh, I have to check about. Okay, uh, Rohit mentioned it uh, pauses on KVM, so yeah. Dependent on the storage, how they implemented it. In most cases, we have to stop. If it is a volume snapshot, we don't. If it is a VM snapshot, you have to pause. Thanks. Any other question? Okay.
Thanks, guys. Uh, thank you for listening to me.